yellow is be here just in case you uh, didn't know that. I hope you're having an amazing week so far and you've had a really lovely weekend. We have had so much rain this week, haven't we? But apparently coming up is a heat wave, so we can all look forward to that. Today we are hearing from the amazing Lucy. She's going to give us a thought and Ben is going to lead us in a game for a second week in a row. We are very lucky people. So you won't hear from me again, but after the game you'll see Lucy's face and she's going to be sharing with us this week. See you next week. Hey soul kids, it's me Ben. I hope you've had another lovely week. You might not have got out as much as this week because it has been quite rainy and there's even been some storms. Have you heard any of the thunder? I know I've seen some lightning. It's been really bright. But some of it's happened quite late, so it might be past your bedtime. Now, this week's game is going to be a game of bingo. So, what you're going to need is a grid and you need to draw it out like this. So there's nine squares for you to then fill out, okay? And I've got this list of animals that you can then fill in that square with. So, it will end up looking a bit like that. I've not put any of the animals on that square on here. So, there's no way you can copy that, there's no way of cheating. You've just got to try and get nine of these animals and put them on your square, okay? There's 17 here, so you don't use all of them. You only use nine, okay? So, I might give you a moment to pause so you can try and write them down. Um, and then I will read out them in an order. And the aim of the game is to get three in the row the quickest. So that might be that they're three along the top or the side or even maybe diagonal. But you've got to just try and get three in the row the quickest. And this game does work best if you've got someone else to play with. However, you can play on your own and then maybe you could message your friends and see what they got. Okay? So I'm going to now read out an order for you to try and cross off. Okay? So I've got hamster. So if you've got a hamster, you then cross that, and then we can move on. Okay, I've now got a seal. Have you got a seal? Okay, now a shark. So you can cross off a shark if you've got that. And then a dolphin. Okay, then a cat. And then a tiger. And then a horse. And then a bat. And a parrot. And the snake and the dog, and the hawk, and the bee, and the lion, and the bear, okay? So that's all the animals, so you will have now completed your grid, even if you didn't get somehow three in a row. But you may have got three in a row after the first three, if you got really lucky, or maybe you did it in the first five, okay? Uh, maybe you've raced your friends to see who's quickest, but uh, that's the end of the game this week. So I'll hand over to Lucy for the message and see you soon. Bye. Hi Soul Kids, it's me Lucy. I hope you've had a really good week this week. I know I have. So um, this month we've been talking about the life of Jesus. So last week B was talking to us about justice and how Jesus responds to that. And she was telling us about different people in history that stood up and fought for justice. So like Martin Luther King Jr. and Rosa Parks. Um, and this week, we're going to be looking at something a little bit similar. Um, but instead of justice, it's about Jesus's forgiveness um, and how he accepts everybody. So we're going to be looking at the story of Zacchaeus. And it's in Luke 19, 1 to 10. So if you have a Bible, um, you can read with me. If you don't, that's okay, because I'm going to be reading it to you guys. Okay. Jesus entered Jericho and made his way through the town. There was a man there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector in the region, and he had become very rich. He tried to get a look at Jesus, but he was too short to see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree beside the road, for Jesus was going to pass that way. When Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by name. Zacchaeus, he said, quick, come down. I must be a guest in your home today. So Zacchaeus quickly climbed down the tree and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. But the people were displeased. He, was, he has gone to be the guest of a notorious sinner, 
they grumbled. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord and said, I will give half my wealth to the poor Lord, and if I've cheated people on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. Jesus responded, Salvation has come to this home today, for this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham, for the Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost. So, basically, in this story, Jesus goes and invites himself to Zacchaeus' house, and most people assume that that means for a meal. So, uh, one of the main things we can take from this story is about when we gather together to have a meal, uh, Jesus is always there with us as well. So that means it can strengthen our Christian community or if they're not Christians, that's okay because it can strengthen the relationship between our friends and our family. So Jesus invites everybody to his table so that they can be forgive, uh, forgiven <laughs> and renewed um, and that's especially outcasts and sinners. And his hope for us is that we would do the same because Jesus calls us to be like him. So the story of Zacchaeus can be used to teach the way that Jesus accepted, forgave, loved and welcomed outcasts and sinners. And it can be a basis for discussing how we are all called to love everybody in the same way. So the change of heart that Zacchaeus experiences after Jesus comes to his home is a good example of the way that we each sin and how we become really far away from God um, but we're able to fix what is broken if we turn to Jesus and ask for forgiveness um, so there are lots of really cool points in the story one of my favorite ones is when Jesus calls Zacchaeus by name so he goes Zacchaeus and Zacchaeus would have been up in this tree and he would have been like what how does Jesus know my name because Zacchaeus would have never talked to Jesus before there was like they'd never met there's no way Jesus would have known his name unless God told him so I'm kind of surprised that Zacchaeus didn't fall out of the tree like out of shock I think I might have because if Zacchaeus if Zacchaeus if Jesus called Lucy and I was up in this tree and I'd never met Jesus I, I would have been like oh my gosh who how does he know me um and I probably would have fallen out of the tree but <laughs> anyway um so I think it's really cool that it's so casual the way it's written in the bible and it's just one word and it it doesn't even really say about Zacchaeus's shock but I think it's just amazing how God told him and so Jesus straight away just knew his name. Um, and the next thing is that in verse 10, it says, for the son of man came to seek and save those who are lost. So Jesus goes out looking for people that are lost. So that might mean they've been sinning a lot or they've been hurt by people who have sinned against them. And Jesus saves them by bringing them to God. So we can do a similar thing um so we can find people that might be outcasts and they might not have many friends and we can become friends with them and we can invite them to our homes and we can tell them about jesus i mean obviously we can't really do that right now because of lockdown but after lockdown maybe we can do that when we start going back to school or when we start seeing our friends more um and jesus wants us to do that because we're told that we should be more like jesus so um, Jesus forgives us because he basically, he saved us all, which is what salvation means. He saved us all by dying for us on the cross. Um, and he paid the price for our sins so that we don't have to. And it's basically what that means is the salvation is because Jesus did that. That means we can go and live in heaven with God forever. Um. So when Jesus says salvation has come to this home and to Zacchaeus, it's not just a little thing. It's not just like, oh, you've been forgiven. It's like you have been saved forever and it applies to every single one of us. So whenever we do something wrong, if we turn to Jesus and we say, look, I'm so sorry, God, please forgive me for this thing. I repent of this. Jesus can fix that thing 
and it brings us so much closer to him and it basically he says yes of course I forgive you and it means that we've turned away from sin and we're facing towards God instead um so yeah the main point of this story is that Jesus loves and accepts everybody it doesn't matter how much they've sinned or even how much like other people like them because if we look at Zacchaeus, he was hated by pretty much everyone because he basically stole all their money. But Jesus accepted him anyway. Like, it wouldn't have mattered if he'd have stolen a penny or a thousand pounds. Jesus loves him no matter what he's done because he loves Zacchaeus for who he is, not what he's done. And if Zacchaeus turns away from his sin and asks Jesus to forgive him, then he will do. Um, and then the last thing is that uh, it's just like a kind of a fact which I think is cool. So the culture at the time, um, it was re it was seen as a sign of respect to invite yourself to somebody else's house, uh, particularly for a meal. So in our culture at the moment, we would never do that because it's seen as really, really rude and really disrespectful. But in Middle Eastern cultures, and particularly at the time when Jesus was alive, it was seen as really respectful. It was seen as like basically a sign that like you liked them if you wanted to go to their house. So I think it's really significant that Jesus invited himself to Zacchaeus's house because it shows how much Zacchaeus wants uh, that shows how much Jesus wants to spend time with Zacchaeus and how much he respects Zacchaeus. And it doesn't matter how much of a sinner he is, because Jesus says, it's okay if you turn from that and face me, I want to spend my time with you. I love you and I forgive you no matter what. And you have been saved. So that applies to every one of us. It doesn't matter how much we've sinned. Because if we turn away from that and look at Jesus, he's always going to forgive us and he's always going to save us. We just have to ask him and we have to say, I'm sorry, I'm not going to do that again. So that's about all for the story of Zacchaeus. I hope you have a really nice week and see you next week. Bye, guys. <laughs>